Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for May 3rd, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Kim and I started out the day at Burger Park before sunrise and there was a beautiful sky but nothing unusual bird-wise. At Burger Park we had a total of 42 species. Next we headed over to the Lakeview Church Trail. It didn't take us long to pick up our first chestnut-sided warbler of the season. Here we have another warbler high in a tree. We see that it's white underneath with a yellowish-orange throat. We see a lot of gray to the upper part, some white wing bars, and some white arcs near the eyes. This is a northern perula, or perula, or perula, or parula, however you want to pronounce it. And here's a warbler everyone loves to see on a sunny day. This is a Blackburnian warbler. The Impidinax flycatchers are notoriously difficult to identify by sight. But thankfully right now there's pretty much only one species around, which is the least flycatcher. There were a good number of Baltimore Orioles along the trail, all singing a very similar distinct dialect. Here we have a warbler with distinctive yellow patches here on the side. This is a yellow-rumped warbler, and we see that white throat, which is typical of the myrtle variety that we have here in the east. Kim and I had run into another local birder named Alan, and we were walking along together, and Alan thought he heard a really buzzy song, so we stopped and listened, and we also had Merlin running, and Merlin started picking up both blue-winged warbler and golden-winged warbler, and we tried to find the birds, and Kim actually got eyes on a golden-winged warbler, but then it flew before me and Alan could get on it. Well, I was already late getting over to the hawk watch, so... Gave it another minute, tried to see the bird, couldn't find it, had to head off. So me and Kim head down the trail, and another birder had joined by that point, and they refound the golden winged warbler and texted us. So me and Kim ran back and were able to get looks at the golden winged warbler. And here it is in all its glory. We see that golden wing patch. We see some gold here on the forehead as well, a lot of black through the eye and a black throat. Golden winged warblers are just one of the toughest warbler species to get up here, so they always cause a lot of excitement. At the church trail, we had 46 species. I like to be over at the hawk watch at 9, but with all of that running and the golden winged warbler emergency, I ended up arriving a little bit late, but it ended up not mattering because there wasn't much of a hawk flight today. It was a beautiful day. Temperatures were fairly warm, but there was a chilly northeast wind coming off of the lake. And we had nice, mostly cloudy skies, just a nice high, thin layer of cloud. So it would have been really good skies for spotting hawks if the winds had been from a more favorable direction. Here's one of the few migrating hawks we had today. Here we see a hawk with a long tail and long wings with rounded tips. So we should be thinking excipiter. And overall, we see a small head on this and not a huge lanky shape, but a little bit of a more compact shape. This is a sharp-shinned hawk, and looking at the streaking on the underside, we can tell that it is a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. There were a lot of these red admiral butterflies around again today. A small group of bobolinks showed up, the first ones I've seen in Braddock Bay Park this spring. And these are just really cool birds. They have a really unique song. They have this cool yellow patch to the back of the head and some nice white highlights to the wings and back. Here we have a large raptor with a mostly white head and overall a dark underside with a lot of splotchy white. This is an older, immature bald eagle. Here we have three wood ducks that flew by. The two on the right are males and the female in the lead. And wood ducks have kind of a long, squared off tail, so it gives them a bit of a unique shape compared to the other ducks that we might see flying around. Here's an eastern kingbird that was actually flying in front of the platform facing into the wind and just hovering in place so we were able to look down at it as it was hovering. And note with kingbirds that they have a white tip to the tail, almost like you took it and dipped the tail in white paint. From the hawk watch today I had 51 species. After the hawk watch, Kim and I headed back over to the firehouse woods where a hooded warbler had been seen earlier in the day. And we patiently sat on a bench and waited for it to show up, which wasn't hard to convince us to do because it's such a beautiful spot on a nice day. We had fun watching this common grackle play around in the water, and he's got some extra splotchy white on the face that they wouldn't normally show. And just after it had crossed my mind once or twice to possibly give up, the male hooded warbler flew in and gave us stunning looks. At the firehouse woods, we only had 17 species, but we got the one that was important. Next, we headed back across the road to the church trail, and this is the parking lot where you park at if you're birding the firehouse woods or the church trail. 
My main target was an orange crowned warbler that had been seen earlier in the day, but we were overall just hoping for more warblers. Here we have a bird that's gray on top, pale underneath, a very plain face, and a somewhat thick bill. This is a warbling vireo. And we couldn't resist joining up with some other birders to hunt for the golden-winged warbler again, and it put on a stunning display for us. Here's another angle that shows that large golden patch in the wing. And here's another look that shows the head better, and the golden-winged warbler seemed to really like these apple trees that have flowers on them right now. At the church trail in the afternoon, we had 26 species. Overall today, I had 83 species, including 13 species of warblers. I had five new species for the season today, which were golden-winged warbler, blue-winged warbler, blackburnian warbler, chestnut-sided warbler, and hooded warbler. And I have now submitted exactly 8,888 eBird checklists. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 30 turkey vultures, one bald eagle, and three sharp-shinned hawks for a total of 34 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 4,553 and the season total to 57,156. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, I put a warning, possible big day, morning showers and then cloudy, very warm with a high around 67, and winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So that's a good southerly wind. We always think of southwest as being our best wind, but sometimes we get really good flights on southeast winds. And that's a headwind for the birds, so sometimes that keeps the birds low and slow, and we end up getting really good looks at them. My only concern for tomorrow might be if it ends up being too gloomy or they put some rain back in the forecast. That might dampen the raptor flight, but overall with southerly winds overnight and some rain hitting overnight, this is just a really good combination as we're coming into peak migration here in early May. I would expect a lot of songbirds to be on the move tonight, and with those winds, hopefully we end up with a really good raptor flight. This time of year, we are still getting a lot of sharp-shinned hawks and bald eagles and broadwings. So we'll see if the weather's good enough to get some of those birds up. Sometimes the broadwings and the bald eagles, they want some sunshine to get some thermals. But with those southerly winds and a little bit of rain, it can be magical along the lakeshore in early May. And taking a look at BirdCast, for the city of Rochester night, it's calling for high migration. Taking a look at windy.com for the wind forecast for tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. We are up here at Braddock Bay, and you can see it's a nice southerly wind to bring migrants up to the lakeshore. It can be counterintuitive because a lot of people think, well, you want a nice sunny day for hawk watching, but often those sunny days are associated with high pressure systems and we don't have the right winds. The days that we have the good southerly winds, which are perfect for us, are often days that are a bit rainy and are associated with warm fronts and then a cold front coming across. So just because there's some rain in the forecast and some clouds, don't let that keep you home, especially as we're coming into the peak of the migration in early May. For Sunday, we're looking at a steady light rain in the morning and then cloudy with showers and a high in the mid 60s and south winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So once again, a good south wind, but it's looking like a bit more rain, especially that steady rain that can hold back the raptor flight or even prevent it entirely. So we'll keep an eye on the forecast tomorrow evening to see if they take any of that rain out. And for Monday, it's looking partly cloudy and warm with the high in the low to mid 60s and light northwesterly winds. Eh, it's looking like an all right day. Would expect light to moderate migration. All right, well, today was a really good day of birding, especially with all of that excitement with the golden winged warbler. And I know a lot of people got to get out and see it. And with the southerly winds overnight tonight and maybe some rain to knock the birds down and southerly winds all day tomorrow, it's guaranteed there's going to be more rare birds passing through our area. And it's up to us to go out and find them. So I hope you'll consider joining us out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. If not tomorrow, hopefully sometime soon. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.